Hey, Blender Bob here. Today we're gonna make this plasma electric kind of portal thing. And to do this, well, first I need to do some research because you know, the good thing about the Blender community is that there's always somebody before you who did it, who already did something similar. So the first thing I was looking for was to how to do electricity, you know, sparks and stuff. And I found this cool tutorial by Riot Gear and yeah, that's a good way to do it. So the link is in the description. This is what he did. He uses the IV generator, an add-on that comes with Blender, to generate the base geometry for the sparks, without the leaves, of course. He also adds some deformers, and finally, he animates the beginning and the ending of the curves. Thank you, Riot Gear, for the inspiration. So yeah, I could have taken the IV generator and created my own thing, but you know, Riot Gear was nice enough to share his files, so I shamelessly took his geometry, <laughs> but I did some modifications on it, so. Let me show you. So this is the actual file that the guy shared and you can see all the lightning appearing one after the other and that's because they are animated. And if you select it, you can see all the keyframes here that were done on the curve. Each of them has the same animation but just offset in time. You can see in the outliner that he animated the factor start and end. And this is what makes the spark grow and then disappear. So as I move the time slider, you can see the sparks appear one after the other. In my case, the same sparks are gonna appear again and again and again. So what I did was to cycle the animation. So you select a curve, you create a modifier cycle, and it's going to, well, of course, cycle the animation forever. So you do this for both curves. And you repeat the same thing for all of the sparks. And you can see in the dope sheet that I offsetted all of them to make sure that they don't spark at the same time. I don't want them to be synchronized. He also had some wave modifiers on the sparks, but I got rid of them because I don't need them. My sparks are too small and the effect is negligible. Okay, so that was at home. Now let's move to the office. Oh, I'm at the office. Very cool. Ah, I'm at home. Ah, at the office. At home. At the office. At home. At the office. I also changed the shader. So what I wanted to do was to have some variety in the sparks so that they don't have all the same color. So I created a color ramp and I put the random here from the object info into the fact. And this is applied to all the sparks. It's one shader, one shader to rule them all. And if I change the colors here, you can see that it will change here you can see every spark has a different color between the ram from this kind of a yellow to the blue. And you have some options here to go clockwise or counterclockwise. Cl clockwise? Counterclockwise. That's on the wheel here. So you turn either in one direction or the other. So if I go like this, I go all the way around the chromatic circle. Okay, but now I'm kind of showing you the final result. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Let me show you how I generated these sparks. Okay, I will turn off the sphere because we don't want to see it. And also I will turn off all the paths they are in the connection, so I got rid of them. So it's very simple. It's just a circle here and I emit some particles. Now it's time to play with the settings. So the amount of particles that you want. So 2000 worked for me. It was a good number. So 2000, whoops, not 200, 2000. The lifetime of the particles. So I put it at eight because the animation to make them appear and disappear lasts eight frames. In the physics tab, I played with the damp. I put some dampening on it because if I don't turn it on, you will see that everything will explode. It will just go all over the place. And you can see it's spinning. The wheel is spinning here. It's a simple expression to make it run. All I did was to go here, create a new driver, and the expression is simply frame divided by two. If you use a bigger number, like frame divided by five, it will turn slower. In the rendering here, I want to use a collection and that's going to be my path here. All the objects of my path are right here and there. I don't need to see it. And then you can adjust the scale and the scale randomness to get the size that you want. I wasn't too crazy about the interior of the ring. It looks too messy. So I thought maybe I could create a sphere that's going to be kind of a black hole in the middle here. So when you turn, you can see it. Well, you shouldn't see it because it's a black hole, but eh, you know what I mean. For the shader, it's just a ram that goes from black to blue to black again for the edges because I don't want it to finish just blue. I used a layer weight node because I wanted to get this blue only around the edges and always facing the camera. You want to be very careful with the color. You don't want to go too strong. Otherwise, it looks like it's not part of the same world, the same universe. It doesn't look as good. Also, what I did is to put the metallic almost at maximum. And if you go in cycles, you can see all the sparks reflecting on the sphere and creates this distortion, this black hole distortion, which is, I think, very cool. And in order to get that reflection, I needed to use cycles. So to create a glow effect, I just did it in compositing.
So here we go, it's that simple and you know what? It's such an easy setup that you can easily make dozens of iteration in one day. So you just change the speed of the particles or you change the rotation or you change the scale or, you know, just play with it, have fun, make your own plasma portal. See you.